Oh man, did that absolutely smash that. G'day everyone and welcome to another full scale fishing adventures video. We are on the Murray River. I've been looking at the flows the past little while because apparently the river fished really well for yellows when it was running about 6,000. I've been looking, it's been running at about 13,000 and the fishing hasn't been great. So this week it's dropped back down to 8,500. So I thought it would be worth coming up running through the usual haunts we're going to fish some rock we're going to fish some timber and we're going to see how that water flow affects the yellow bite in the murray i've got some good spots planned we'll just tick down do a little bit of a drive down and we'll get stuck in beautiful morning though i thought i'd get up here early so i can fish through the morning bite we'll see what happens during the middle of the day and you know if we need to hang around for the afternoon or not but it is certainly a stunning morning So I think the plan is got. I was tossing up whether to fish rock or timber to start with the whole way down, but I'm going to start with these snags. Sort of theory is that it's early in the morning and I pick the sunny side um, and yeah, just work through these snags. I'm going to hit the rock after the sun's been up for a little while. I think that's my plan. So I thought I would fish in amongst all this mess I was feeling red and black spinnerbait so that's what I'm going to go with to start with big blade red and black because the water's still a bit dirty it's got a lot of pulse still heaps of current charging across <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. That didn't take long at all. Nice fish. Well, what a good start. And that's really, that's really the confidence booster that I needed because, um, you know, starting out early, um, you really want to feel, you know, a fish and, uh, that's exactly what happened, so we know we're doing the right things. So you have it. It's just on that red and black tornado half ounce. What I actually really like about that bait is that it does have that size 7 Colorado, so it's got lots of pulse. And I think in this dirty water, um, lots of pulse is a very good thing. So, And because we are yellow belly fishing, I think all these little... Uh, sort of lesser insignificant snags I would call them are probably worth a shot too as you're drifting past Oh man, did that absolutely smash that. Wow, what a fish. Dude, that was a cracker. Oh. <laughs> what a tank. Now that is a big yellow belly. That is awesome, that is a horse. A bit of a dip. Check this out. What an absolute 
chunk. Chunk of a yellow belly. I've <laughs> uh, just been flicking in amongst all those little pockets. I've been fishing fairly close. And this was right in the zone. Like there's all those spindlies that come out at the end of the thick bit of the root base. And he was just sitting in there and he absolutely smashed that. That is awesome. Really, really cool fish. So in the Murray, this particular stretch of the Murray, the bank doesn't just come straight down and drop off into deeper water. So what actually happens is you come down the bank and where that root base is, there's actually, there's a metre or two of water that's probably about half a metre deep. So uh, it's just this side of that root base where it actually drops off into the deeper water. So you don't want your cast to go right in amongst where the reeds and stuff are. You actually want to drop them like a couple of metres this side or at least a metre this side and that'll get them sinking down to where the fish usually sit. Very stoked with that start. Two really good fish out of the timber. That one absolute bopper. So I was really stoked with that one. Um, there's a really good jigging snag just over here. So I'm just gonna whip across, uh, put a blade on and then um, jig this one and then keep moving down. Oh. A bit of scent on there. And on everything else by the looks of it. All over my bag. That's gonna be smelly. Oh, switchblade. All right, let's see if we can't jig up one. Nothing on the jig. I might have had one half sort of rattle. I'm just going to move through these snags now. All right. So we're going to do now. Just been through that timber. I'm going to go down and do a run um, along the cliff. Uh, still cast that spinner bait. The idea I think I've got in my head is I'm going to go to the bottom because we've got a light southerly blowing up. I'm going to go to the bottom and then I can drift with the wind but against the current. So that should slow the drift just nice to be able to work that spinner bait nice, nice and slow. So we'll head down there now. So it's going to get in against the edge here, keeping with that same red and black spinnerbait and just gonna work all the way down here usually it's pretty good i'd expect to get a bite along here but like with all river murray fishing it seems you just need to go through the process and cast your lures in the right spots and what'll be what'll be i think I knew there had to be one there somewhere. There's such a beautiful bit. There's snags, there's rocks. There had to be fish. That's awesome. All right, dude. In you come. How good's that? How good is that? Check him out. Nice, 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 nice. Red and black, working very well. Beautiful, made the change to the rock and provided the goods. It's a good day, it's been a good day. Definitely one of the biggest things that I've learned fishing the Murray is that you need to make it easy. So whether that's using, and this is regardless of whether you're chasing cod or whether you're chasing yellows, but 
you know, using a lure that's easy to use so you can keep casting, not getting snagged. You can cast the distance you need it to cast and then picking, picking your location to make it easy too. So if you're fishing in the wind and it's a struggle, then move somewhere else where you're going to be more efficient because that actually increases your chances more than having the best spot in the world. I think the best spot in the world that is impossible to fish is not a very good spot at all. Um, and yeah, I think just making things easy actually brings the results more than anything when you're fishing the Murray. Would you believe it? I can actually see a yellow sitting on the edge there. Can actually see a yellow belly sitting on the edge there. Get in there. I don't want to make too much noise. Yeah, he's right there. He's right there. Just got a yellow belly on fly. <laughs> oh my god, how awesome is that? <laughs> I saw him sitting against the edge and then uh, <laughs> I didn't want to make too much noise because they spook so quickly or so easily. But how awesome is that? I just caught a yellow belly on fly so it cast off the edge of the cliff. Well, that's pretty specky. How cool is that? So it cast yellow belly on fly. <sighs> Sight cast yellow on the fly. Oh off the edge of the cliff and so important just to move slowly wear your sunglasses i would not go fishing without sunglasses and i just saw this yellow sitting there on the edge and he was more than happy more than happy to cream that little woolly bugger well that is pretty special that is pretty special <laughs> very happy with that check out the fly well, there you go. Yellow on fly. Well, I have not done that for years, Polaroid yellow on fly off the bank like that. And I could probably count on my hands the amount of times that's actually happened to me. And that means you need to remember two things. It just shows you how shallow callop will sit. Like that was sitting in probably, I don't know, 20 centimeters, 30 centimeters of water. And always pack your fly rod. Never forget to take your fly rod. All right. Oh, whose is that? That must have been in there for a very very long time because well maybe not that long but both the hooks are gone <laughs> leave a comment if that is your lure <laughs> let's roll <laughs> So what we got here, it's another run of snags, sort of, these are slightly shallower than the last lot we did, they're probably mainly two, some three metres of water, but I'm just going to do the same thing, get in close, use that same tactic that worked before, get in close and fish all the little hot spots and 
We'll see if they're not a little bit more active on the timber. They seem to be before. I'd looked at that log. It's like a really old bit next to that nice bit there. And it just looked so good. It almost looked clear on top of there. I don't think it is, but nice. Nice that he came out and smashed it. Oh, he's a real yellow. He's a real yellow yellow. He's got a bit of fin rot going on, but nice. Number five. Got my bag. Yeah, well, I think a day on the Murray for me is always defined on whether you get your five fish, which is our legal bag limit. So that's number five for me. The spinnerbait has just been creaming it this morning. Been really good. So I think whatever happens from here on in is just a bonus. All right, you can go in there with your mate. quick recap we've sort of been down through that rocky bit it's getting towards lunchtime now I'd say the bite was a lot better in the morning and also the other thing that I noticed the bite was a lot better along the timber so I think I gave both the rock and the timber a pretty like even go and definitely when I hit that timber um, I found fish pretty quickly and I think that's one really important thing to remember when you fish the lower Murray is that the, the rocky areas are so different to the timbered areas and you will find that the fish will hold on one and not the other at certain times. So pays to give both a go. The setup I used was that half ounce Tornado TT spinnerbait. And I really like that spinnerbait because it's got the nice big blade. Red and black is such a good color. The setup I threw it on was the medium heavy six foot six Komodo. That's a really nice rod matched with that 273 Komodo casting reel. So on the Komodo, I'm running 30 pound platypus super braid and also a 40 pound platypus hard armor tough leader. And the reason why I'm fishing heavier is because the water's dirty, the fish don't care, and I really don't want to lose my lures to snag. So why wouldn't you fish heavier? The plan now is I'm going to start heading back towards the ramp. I might fish a few spots on the way back in, but I've got my five fish bag. It's been a really great day. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you like it, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. It helps me a lot and hopefully I'll see you out in the water sometime.